Oh hey guys, it's been a while since I even posted a new video, and yeah, I, I used to say, hey, I'm gonna do it daily, but I don't wanna bore you with like all the uninteresting part of the game development, so I'm trying to like cherry pick whatever interesting, and seems like I actually found one. It's something to do with Unity Gaming Services, well, a part of it. I'm gonna talk about Unity Multiplay. Unity Multiplay is basically a game server hosting where you can have a dedicated multiplayer hosting for, you know, your games, obviously. And I think it's pretty cool. This is gonna be a tutorial video because a lot of people that seems to really want to know about this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna try to make one. Oh, before we're gonna go straight into it, for those who are really curious about the current Dumb Squad progress, uh, we actually did two new monsters called Electrovorus and Dracono Bovis Gala, which is a dragon. So first thing you need to do is you need to make sure your project is linked with project ID to be exact. And to do that is quite easy. Go to your player settings. I got mine right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to service. Right now I do have a existing Unity project, so I can go here. But if you don't have any, you can create your own by clicking on the organization, create a project ID, project ID, put in your name and all and you'll be good to go but for me i already have it so i'm just gonna go to use an existing unity project id go here you need a um, soul cat and dub score thank you cool now we need to install the game server hosting you can see here it says hey you gotta go to unity go to windows package manager click on the plus icon and add package by name you can see this is the name so let's go back to unity and go to package manager so I'm gonna press on the plus icon click by name and I can paste it here all right cool you got yourself multiplayer install on your unique project now we need to create a, a game server that is compatible with multiplayer service let's check on the integration requirement so the thing about game server hosting is they create this thing called server.json file let's see what's inside that JSON real quick you click this guy and this is what it's gonna look like. So we have an IP address, which is uh, IPv6. We don't need this because um, we're gonna use IPv4, but the thing that we're gonna care about is the port number. And this thing gonna be changing depending on where your server gonna be located. So here's the current state of the game, and let's play it out. You can see that my game is currently waiting for a server to be connected and you can see down here it is trying to connect to a local version of the server so when i run the server you can see that the client is trying to connect to the teleporter the teleporter is basically another name for my server everything's work well so i can minimize this now and move around the player so the way that this client and server thingy work is technically by ip address and port number as you can see from here the way that my game work is i have a bootstrap here to indicate whether i'm in client mode server mode for the lobby and server mode for the quest let's see our game running as a server so i'm gonna switch on my bootstrap as a server lobby i'm gonna run the game and you can see that my game is running as a server you can see the ip number and port here and there's a couple of scenes loaded as it works go to console you can see that the booster is running the app as a server lobby we have our uh, network running in localhost with 777 port you can see that the server is setting up it load up the game and then it runs our network manager component which is right around here you can see that I have my network manager and my tugboat these two things are fish networking components Network manager handles starting and stopping the server or the client. Tugboat responsible on setting up the IP address and port number. So let's open up the script and see what's inside. You can see there's a couple of things here. Keep in mind that this script is only designed for my game, so yours might be a bit different. But the ideas come kind of the same thing. 
you need to make sure that the network manager has the right port and the right address. To get the port number, we need to make sure that we initialize the SDK first. And to do the SDK, we have to start on awakening. We're going to make private async void initialize multiplay SDK. We're going to make a try and patch method. And inside of a try, we're going to put in await unity services dot initialize async. This will initialize our SDK. And let's put in a debug.log multiplay initialize. Then after this, we can actually assign the port number. So for the IP address, I can set it to 0.0.0.0. And for the port number, I can grab it from the server config. And to get that server config, let's put it another line here. Block server config. And because we initialized the SDK, we can actually go to multiplay service dot instance dot server config. And the reason why it's instance, it's because it's create a singleton called i multiplay service. And that is created from initializing the SDK later on. After we get the server config, we can just see server config dot port. Let's copy the debug log here and put it here. And put the exception right around here. Put a dollar sign here so we can format it. And that's about it. We have to make sure that we call this at the awake method. The next thing we need to do is to create a query handler. Multiplay we actually try to communicate with the query. If it doesn't exist, it will actually try to disconnect and just shut it down. Inside of our server manager, we need to create a couple of variables. Here's the example code of the server query handler. First thing we need to create is the max player, the server name, the game type, the build ID, the map, and the port. For the game type and the map, I already have two here. My game type will be on my server type. And for the map, I will just use the, the map variable that I currently have here. And for the build ID, I don't really have to create a variable for that because it will I can actually use application version. So the only thing that I will add here is the max player. In Dumb Squad, the max player for my lobby is 9999. That's the maximum client that can be connected through the fish networking. So I'm just gonna put in the max player and I'm gonna set the default to 9999. All right, cool. Now we need to go and create a private I server query handler. So this is will be our M server query handler. Now we need to modify our start method. So I'm gonna modify it in between here. I'm gonna put in the M server query handler and I'm gonna await multiplay service dot instance dot start server query handler async. And then under parentheses, we're gonna put in the max player. This thing is a use short, so we have to put in a use short cast. And then we need to put in the default server name. I'm gonna put in my server tab as my server name. Then we need to put in the game tag. And again, it will be the same thing as my server type as well. And for the build ID, I can put in the application version. And for the map, I can just put my, my map variable before. And you might notice there's some weird thing here because this is an enum. I have to put in a string. What's next is to update our query handler. So I'm gonna put in a private update in here. I'm gonna put in server query handler, the update server check. This is important since we need to get new and fresh update for our query handler. Actually, we can create a function to change our query response value if we need to. We can simply create a run down here. Let's create a public void change query response value in here. Put in a u short max players a string called server name, another string for game type, and then another string for build ID. Then we can put in the server query handler dot max players, the server name, the game type, and lastly, build ID. Now we have a public function that we can change our query response at any time. And the last thing is we want to update our player count and simply add another function. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it private void player count change. And here I'm gonna put in a u short new player count, and in here I'll put in the server query handler dot current players is equal to new player count. And I'm gonna copy this. And because I already have a function that checks for total player here, as you can see in my late update, I can simply put it here on the player count change and put in the current connected players. And because there's a error here, we have to put in a cask to change it into a user. And that's about it. We created our query response to be able to communicate with the multiplay service properly. I also need to set my tugboat to set my max client based on my query handler. I actually have to add another line of code for my tugboat. I'm gonna go to my init multiply SDK real quick. I can simply add in tugboat dot set maximum client. I'm gonna put in the max player from the query handler variable. 
the last thing we need to do is to create event callbacks and to create a key event callbacks we're gonna make a new script for that so i'm gonna try and make a new script and i'm gonna call this as multiply event callbacks and i'm gonna drag that event callbacks inside my server manager just like that i'm gonna open it up and edit first things first that we need to create is we need to make a private multiplay event callbacks i'm gonna call it as m underscore multiplay event callbacks and the other one is to create an i server events i'm gonna call it m server events cool now we need to create a private async void start and in the start we need to prepare our first callback first we need to call the event callbacks as a new event callbacks and then we need to create our callbacks so i'm gonna open up server we're gonna type in multiply the server callbacks allocate plus equal and we, then we can press tab to create it automatically let's create another one for the allocate for the error and for our subscription state all right so now we have pretty much all of them then we need to subscribe it into our server events so we need to type in server events oh wait multiply service dot instance dot subscribe server events async and our multiply event callbacks and that's about it all right let's rename this to make it more prompt right so i rename all the things inside the on subscription state change let's add in a switch statement and let's change this obj as state and on state we're gonna put in the cast multiplay server subscription state dot unsubscribe we're gonna make a debug a log unsubscribe and put a break on there let's do the same thing for subscription state sync we copy this so i'm gonna copy this multiple times and change this into on sync error and subscribing and this is our template for pretty much everything else all right so we are left with this tweet let's put in error here and we're gonna put in a debug.log error.string and for the allocation here and this is what happened when the server is deallocated let's put a simple debug.log server is allocated and let's copy and paste it here for the allocation all right so this is our basic events now we need to communicate to the server manager to link our allocation and the allocation to start and stop our server automatically to do that it's quite simple okay i created two events called underscore on allocate and underscore on the allocate i'm gonna copy this and put it into our allocate here first dot invoke and i'm gonna copy this to the our the allocate and put the allocate and there you go so whenever our server is allocate and allocate it will invoke our unity events and do something about it and that is pretty much it for the callbacks so let's go back to unity right here we have our events callback here we do have the unity event here i can press plus and i can drag our ds server manager here and because of my script I have two public function where i could start and stop my server can simply call that in my allocate so i'm going to start set ready game server here and for the allocate i'm going to drag the same thing I'm going to go to my ds server manager to set on ready game server however i do need to change a bit on my server manager so i'm going to go to my server manager real quick so here as you can see on the start i actually have my set ready game server here running however i don't want it to start running when i'm not allocated yet I'm gonna put in my safety guard here. We need to make sure that our server will be able to communicate to the multiplayer whether they are ready or unready. Because we already put our public set ready game server and set unready game server earlier on the Unity events. We just need to add one more code to it to tell the multiplayer that we are ready to accept or not. I'm gonna put in await and then we're gonna put in multiplay service dot instance dot ready server for play async. Let's do the same for the unready. I'm gonna put in await multiplay service dot instance dot unready player async. We are ready to build the server. Before you export your Linux server, you have to make sure that you install the right modules. Go to your installs, click on your new version, click on the gear icon and add module. Make sure that here you have Linux built support with IL2CPP, mono, and dedicated server build support to be enabled. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to go to the dedicated server here. So I'm going to change this to Linux. I'm going to switch to our platform and now it's time to build. So I'm going to press the build. So we successfully exported our server app and we need to upload it to Unity Multiplay Service. So go to dashboard.unity.com. Go and sign in with your Unity account. All right, I am now in my dashboard. I'm going to go to my multiplayer. So in the multiplayer section, I'm now in my dump squad project. Make sure that you enable the multiplayer. So let's create a build. I'm going to click here and for the build, I'm 
just gonna say server and I'm gonna click direct file upload and I'm gonna press next let's wait for a bit all right so I'm, we're gonna drag only this tree the data the executable and the SO I'm gonna click and drag and put it here uh, let's press upload now all right so we have our server uploaded now we need to press next all right cool let's press finish let's wait for a bit you can see here once we have a build we can then assign it to a build config but we gotta wait until the build is finished syncing all right cool now it's ready so now we can start making our build config we're gonna go to the build config here let's create a new build config let's call this server dash config select the build that we uploaded earlier let's look for the executable all right we got our executable here make sure that you set it to sqp and then on the launch parameter we're gonna add two more additional parameters first is the model second is the ip and i'm gonna add in use multi play service and i've set it to true i can then press next and press next we can set the cpu and memory i'm gonna put it on default right now i'm gonna press finish okay cool now we have our build config but it's time to create a fleet i'm gonna press here create a fleet I'm gonna create a fleet here let's call this fleet as lobby I'm gonna put in the server config here I'm gonna press next now let's select a region i'm in asia I'm gonna put in the minimum to zero and one press finish all right at a moment if you click on view server there's no server at the moment and that's because you have to test the allocation first click on the test allocation and create a test allocation here select the fleet the region and the build config then press run test and this is gonna take some time so just wait you can see our server is allocated successfully you can see our ip and port number here I'm just gonna copy this and press finish now i'm gonna click on my bootstrap changing this to a client put it in the ip number i'm gonna grab the port and put it here so I can then press here and run. Alright. Alright, as you can see that our game are now connected to the server. So for recap, we need to make sure that the IP address and the port number are correct. The second thing is to make sure that we have our query handler set up. And the last thing is to set up the event callbacks. So let's see what happened if I deallocate the server. So I have the dashboard here. I'm gonna press the allocate. And then you can see the end of my game. I'm disconnected from the server. So let's see what's inside the logs. If I scroll down, you can see that in here, it initialized our SDK, sync up, and then it connected, it allocate our server. We're then setting up the server. We load up the game world. We set up the connection. And you can see one total player is connected. And then when we press the allocate, we got a callback, server is deallocated, it stops our connections, and zero total play is connected, and then it stops connection. Alright, finally, you now know how to create a game server that is compatible with Unity Multiplayer service. I hope this video kind of helped you on how to get started. Uh, I think the next video, I might gonna talk about how to integrate Multiplay and Matchmaker together. Maybe after that, we'll probably gonna do back good old devlogs. And yeah, see ya. Thank you.